Last summer, myself and a small team set out to build a machine learning platform. Specifically, we wanted to tackle the mouthful of a challenge of running massively parallelized hyperparameter optimization experiments. It's not, it's not important that you know exactly what that is, so much as you know that Kubernetes is a perfect technology to use for solving that problem. And as infrastructure engineers, we were incredibly excited to get started building on top of Kubernetes. But we were worried about intimidating our users who weren't infrastructure experts. So we had a lot of um, interesting user experience decisions that we needed to make. Unfortunately, after our launch, our tool wasn't that big of a hit. And in this brief talk today, I want to tell you why. I'm going to go over three critical user interface decisions, two big problems, and one takeaway from our experience. And this talk, it's short, it's a very specific example, but I hope that it generalizes well to anyone building infrastructure tools for non-infrastructure people. Before I dive in, I'm Alexandra. Um, until August, I was a tech lead at SIGOPT, and this is where I got the experience for my talk. I am also the co-organizer of the Bay Area chapter of Women in Machine Learning and Data Science. The three critical decisions we made as part of our machine learning platform. The first was that we were going to focus on building an infrastructure tool for non-infrastructure people. These were going to be people running machine learning workloads. The second decision was that since the users were going to be technical people trying to use this infrastructure tool, we figured that a command line interface was appropriate. Third, since our users were technical people but they weren't infrastructure experts, we were going to hide Kubernetes from them below an abstraction layer of the CLI. They wouldn't interact with Kubernetes directly, but they would interact with our commands, which would then call the Kubernetes API. In my experience, users of machine learning platforms fall into a few different groups. The data scientist and the machine learning engineer face the same challenges. They're both technical, non-infrastructure experts who want to run machine learning workloads that require a lot of compute, such as massively parallelized hyperparameter optimization experiments. So our tool solved this problem. Why wasn't it an instant runaway success? Within even this small group, there are massive differences in their preferences and tolerances for infrastructure technology. On the one hand, you've got the data scientist. They were like, Cooper, what is? Get rid of this terminal. You know I do all of my work in an IPython notebook. And on the other hand, we had the machine learning engineer who was like, Kubernetes, that's awesome. I love the CLI, but your stupid abstraction layer is getting in the way of me tinkering with and customizing my setup. So on the one hand, the data scientist loved the abstraction layer and hated the interface but the machine learning engineer hated the abstraction layer and loved the interface. In our effort to build a tool for everyone, we hadn't designed a tool for anyone. The problem wasn't our decision to hide Kubernetes. It was that our user interface didn't take into account the nuances of our user personas. Our conclusion was to take a step back, observe our users in action, and focus on designing for one user persona at a time. My takeaway for those of you who are building user interface, for, who are building Kubernetes-based tools for non-infrastructure experts is to focus on your design and to focus on your users. Reach out to me on Twitter. I'd love to keep talking about machine learning platforms and machine learning infrastructure for the rest of the conference. And thank you for having me in San Diego.